Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons, and, why, and today I want to explain to you why I'm more excited about Dungeons & Dragons than I have ever been before. All right, um, so sorry, I, I'd love to, you know, summarize it for you, but it's a little complicated, and you'll have to wait until the end of the video to get to the full point. Um, usually I try to summarize it, and, you know, kind of get right there, but uh, be please be patient. Let's go. All right. Why am I more excited now about Dungeons and Dragons than ever before? Well, the reason why is because I believe that what I believe that my unique view of Dungeons and Dragons is closer to manifesting for the masses than it's ever been before. All right. So what is my unique view of, of Dungeons and Dragons? So I actually don't believe that Dungeons and Dragons is a game. I think that Gary Guy, I'm the only I'm the only person in the world who believes this. And absolutely no one else believes this. But I am encouraged because every day I see new evidence that what I believe is true, right? And I and I think we're getting to a new we're we're approaching the arrival, the emergence of a group of people who will see what I see or experience it before they even see it and then realize what they experienced. All right. So, so let's, let's get there. Okay. So let, yeah, let's get there. Okay. So I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is not a game, but a human improvement engine. I believe it's the most powerful secular human improvement engine ever created. So I'm an evangelical Christian. I, of course, I believe that, uh, actual true Christian churches are the most powerful force for human improvement that's ever been established. And actually, I don't, I don't think there's really much debate about that. Like we built, you know, uh, take a look at like Christ X, right? You'll find orphans, libraries, universities, hospitals. Now go find yourself some atheists and agnostics and you go find uh, chaff and wind, right? So, but when it comes to what people have produced, right? Not everybody's Christian, right? So what about the lost, right? What what improvement engines have any human beings actually built, right? And I, I think there are some. Um, one of the self improvement one of the self improvement engines that have been built are self help books. It's a it's an incredibly uh, profitable um, engine. Or it's a profitable. So, uh, human improvement engine, but it's incredibly ineffective, right? The biggest issue is most people are highly embarrassed to buy uh, a um, uh, a self help book. They're worried that they'll be seen in the store buying it, or they're worried that, that somebody will see them, you know, the title of the book, right? And it's like, you know, it's like a, and you're like, well, just put a cover on the book. That's like drinking brown liquor, right? Like, you know, from a, that's like drinking liquor from a brown bag, right? Like nobody assumes you're drinking soda, right? So if you got a covered book, nobody's like assuming that you're reading something normal. So it's a huge, it's, it's incredibly ineffective. And frankly, I have literally never, ever once, oh, I'm sorry, I did once. I met someone once who said that a self-improvement self book, self, that a self-help book had helped them, right? So that's an, it does the same thing. It's a human improvement engine, but it's incredibly ineffective. It is incredibly profitable for for authors and for uh, publishers, but that's not the same thing as being helpful to the people who buy them, right? So, completely different, right? So, so Dungeons and Dragons is a human improvement engine that is a different type, right? Now, I'm the only now. Why I'm excited though, because I'm the only person in the world who believes this. I'm the only person in the world. And also, what do I believe? Yeah, let me let me get all the way there to explain exactly what I actually believe. I believe that if you put one dungeon master and five dragon masters, I, I use the term dragon master for player. Okay, uh, if you put if you gather a standard bog standard physical table, physical human beings, physical books, physical dice, and you gather them together, and and you gather them together, all right? Now, that's that that's done every Sunday, right? All over the world, right? That's, you know, that, that we have that right now. But what I believe is I believe that if you have one dungeon master who believes that by using Dungeons & Dragons to tell a narrative, 
they can find out something profound and valuable. They can learn something profound and valuable for themselves or one of the players at the one of the dragon masters at the table. And if there are five dragon masters that believe that by engaging in the narrative, right, as genuinely and honestly and dedicatedly as they possibly can, they can learn something profound and beneficial specifically for, um, they can uh, learn something profound and beneficial for themselves or the dungeon master or another dragon master at the table. I believe if you sit down with five dragon masters and one drag and one dungeon master that all believe that by engaging in the D&D narrative, they can learn something profound and beneficial for themselves or someone else at the table, it absolutely can happen. Now, it has never happened. It has never happened, right? Because there's never, that table has never existed because I'm the only person in the world who believes this. I know this because I've been saying it for five years and absolutely no one has ever come along and said, I believe what you believe, Scott, right? But the reason why I'm incredibly excited is I believe we are closer than ever to that happening. Why? Well, the biggest thing is, the so my issue is people use, there's something standing in my way, right? Dungeons and Dragons is a game. It's, it is the most dismissive. And as long as people continue to believe Dungeons and Dragons is a game, nothing I say matters, right? Because they're just, because the word game is dismissed. Right, it's the point is fun, the point is win lose, um, and uh, oh, what about co-ops, Scott? Nobody plays them. Everybody despises them. They sit on shelves, right? They they do not, you know, they languish, right? And so, so people think that games are for winning and losing, right? And they think they're for fun, right? And they they don't they don't go to games for answers. No one goes to games for answers, right? And uh, yeah, you're like I I got you. And you're like, what about game theory? Even that, it's not it's not answers, it's conceptual solutions, right? I'm talking real life problem solving answers for one or more of the people at the table, right? And I think that only now, why do I think that this group of people is going to emerge? You know, one dungeon master and five dragon masters. Well, the reason why is there is an absolutely ex there's an absolute explosion of uses for Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is very quickly escaping its game box, right? It is, and actually, I would say it's a cage, right? G A M E. Really, it's spelled C A G E. Game is the word game is the cage that Dungeons and Dragons has been in for fifty years. And now it needs to break out. It truly needs to break out, right? And so, so basically, once it, uh, so why do I think it's going to break out of that cage? People are using Dungeons and Dragons for a ton of things. People are using Dungeons and Dragons to feed their children. Not, not a joke. There's drinks and, at this point, there's drinks and food that are labeled Dungeons and Dragons. People are using Dungeons and Dragons to cover their feet. Converse just did a Converse. Chuck Taylor's. One of the most classic sneakers ever, right? Just did a massive deal. There are literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of D&D sneakers being printed as we speak, right? Um, to clothe themselves. It's been happening for, for a decade now, two decades now, right? Increasingly, I see people in the open just wearing the, the red ampersand openly, right? To, sh to shod themselves, to clothe themselves. Open discussion. Right, like so, and then uh, in the new Lego instruction guide, right? Lego and D and D said that increasingly groups are talking about Dungeons and Dragons and its therapeutic benefits. Right? People are using Dungeons and Dragons for things far beyond fun. Right? And fun truly has been the anchor that has held Dungeons and Dragons back. And so I am very convinced that some very smart, and actually that's another thing I have to I have to say, right? There's no shortage of smart smart people that play Dungeons and Dragons, right? But what I believe has never manifested, and why? Well, we need something really unique. 
We need somebody who's powerful, powerfully intellectual, powerfully emotional, and powerfully spiritual, right? To really understand the power of, narr- of, dun- of a Dungeons & Dragons narrative, you need somebody who is intellectually balanced, emotionally balanced, and spiritually balanced. And they are incredibly rare, right? And frankly, I don't think most of them have ever played Dungeons and Dragons. The people who are, who are, uh, make no mistake, I believe everyone who plays Dungeons and Dragons at any length is powerfully intellectual. They're thinkers, right? We have absolutely no shortage of intellectually balanced geniuses playing Dungeons and Dragons. What we lack are people who are intellectually balanced, emotionally balanced, and spiritually balanced. But Dungeons and Dragons, because it is not playing by the OSR rules and not playing by the indie rules and doing everything it can to reach the muggle world, the people who don't play Dave, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, rather than trying to to get gather more. And that's, that is, yeah, that explains it. So why are the OSR and the indie so fundamentally different? The OSR and indie are always trying to steal. They're trying to sheep shift. That's what we call it in church, right? Like, uh, in, you know, if I have an event, if, if I'm going to an evangelical church and then I go to another evangelical ch- church, it doesn't help the kingdom, right? Like, it's just sheep shifting, right? OSR and Indy are constantly sheep shifting. They are not winning over anybody who is outside of the tabletop role playing game community because they have no ability to. Little people literally don't know they exist, right? Where, and they, they can't get on shelves. They, like, it, not even in, like, I, not a joke. I saw on Twitter the other day, I saw a, a major, um, I saw an OSR, actually an indie, an indie creator, uh, who one of their followers had said, Hey, I actually saw you in a bookstore and he was thrilled, right? This is a person who creates books and was shocked that his book was on the shelf in, in, you know, anywhere, right? Like, and this is most OSR and indie, but D and D is out there and it is going far beyond, Right. And so I think when you know now that we're reaching millions and millions and millions more with Lego and with uh, you know and with sneakers and with movies, literally blockbuster films that you know that made close to a quarter billion dollars, right? And you know we're connecting ourselves to Michelle Rodriguez and Christopher Pine, right? And Sophia Lilith and Justice Smith and every A24 and you know the next A24 movie you know, points people directly back to the to the Dungeons and Dragons movie, we are drawing people. And I believe in the people we're drawing, we will find the six. The one dungeon master, right? The five dragon masters who believe that by engaging in the D&D narrative with dedication, with openness, with honesty, and with intensity, they can find a profound truth for themselves or someone at the table. I'm very excited. I really believe this is going to happen. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. I would love to hear your humble opinion. Please consider like subscribing and have a fetch millennium.